And I had the privilege of teaching leadership with Peter Drucker, all right, which was a huge privilege before he died. Yeah. And one of the reasons I did that is I made the mistake at a conference in San Diego in the Hotel Dell, and I can still see the situation. I did something a lot of agile people did. I was young and inexperienced. That's my excuse. And I said complexity took us beyond Taylorism. And I mean, if you ever remember that famous vice presidential debate when it's I knew, you know, Kennedy, I got that. All right. If you've ever been taken apart by a 93 year old genius on a public platform in front of 2000 people, I ended up as a puddle of humiliation on the stage. He decided I was redeemable, so they took me out for dinner, and then I actually talked with him for a long period. Right? And one of the conclusions we came to, and I stopped criticising systems thinking, and, because actually when people talk about Taylorism, they're actually talking about systems thinking. They're talking about all the things which came in in the 80s and 90s with things like business process re-engineering and Six Sigma. If you actually go back to Taylor and you bother to read Taylor, he was trying to humanize the workforce. If you look at what it was like before Taylor, and we all now look at what Taylor produced and said, that's terrible. It was a damn sight better than came before. All right. And he was trying to humanize it by removing the mechanical side. So what Drake and I ended up coming to the conclusion on is complexity theory and scientific management have a lot in common. And they both differ radically from systems thinking its derivatives because they both respect human judgment. If you actually go back, to, to Taylorism, management is an apprentice model of management. Yeah, it's, it's, and what happens with systems thinking is an attempt to reduce human judgment completely from the equation and make everything processes and competences and structures and measurement. Yeah, there were no three or five year plans until systems thinking came in. I mean, the irony of US companies adopting the planning cycle of Soviet Russia is always I found ironic, all right? Um, the reality is you had people with lots of experience who adapted to things as they went along and did some long-term things and did some risks. And, you know, they'd grown, you know, they had, they brought in new blood from time to time, but the majority of people like Japanese companies still to this day were there for life. So they built the relationships and they were committed to the company long-term. Now we're bringing back that type of decision-making in the work we're now doing on complexity. Mm. So I... Uh, I, was, I, I know last time we had this conversation and I didn't get a chance to follow up on it, but is it that we butchered the idea of systems thinking because we tried to... Uh, no, it's, it's systems, on, systems thinking was ontologically flawed from day one. Uh, could you and, make uh, I say this, all right? I, I did a lot with cybernetics and I did. I, had, I owe a huge debt to Peter Checklin for soft systems. Mm -hmm. yeah? um, and in terms of where we were with the 80s and 90s, it made a lot of sense because we didn't know about complexity theory then, all right? And yeah, you know, if you look at it and you look at systems dynamics, it's all feedback loops and structure. And these nice little general statement about you should look at the system as a whole, right? Mm -hmm. And so what you see with systems thinking also comes in, it's dominated by engineers and by information processes. So things like Ashby and Shannon, that's where it comes from, yeah? Mm -hmm. And of course, engineers don't like ambiguity and uncertainty. Yeah, and therefore we get re-engineering the corporation. And the famous thing at the start of you know, Hammer and Shamfrey's book, nothing that has happened in the past has any relevance to the future. That's what it says. Mm -hmm. And so what we want is a greenfield site when we're building on a brownfield site. So this, this evolutionary, we're, we're now shifting into these more ecological frames. So from my point of view, I've, uh, there's a huge debt. I've said many times that there's no way that Stafford Beer would have produced VSM if he'd known about complexity theory. It's a brilliant piece of work in the context of what was known at the time, but yeah, so what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is, you know, people say, well, systems thinking address complexity. Well, yes, it did. Human, the human race addressed the gravity with canals, but then Newton came along and we understood the science, at which point we can do things differently. All right. Okay. So I mean, that, that's an ongoing debate, all right? But I think the, the problem is systems thinking is transitionary. Right? There's still things in it which have value, but it's not a universal, all right? And it doesn't handle, I mean, it's quite interesting. I mean, you listen to Gerald Midgley, I was listening to the other day, all right? This is one of the doyens. He says, the definition of a system is something which has boundaries and is based on human perception. 
Well, from a complexity point of view, systems are divided by coherence, not by boundaries. Some systems don't have boundaries. And we also, this is materialism, we actually know that things actually exist. It's not just about human perception. So if a human being wants to say a system is something when it's something different, that's rather like treating young creationists as they should be, if, as if their argument should be accepted seriously. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's the old phrase used with postmodernists is reality exists, live with it. Yeah. 